So if you add summer units to unique equipments, what exactly do you get? Uh, summer units with unique equipments, I guess. I, I don't really know where that was going. Hi, welcome back to the channel. My name is Lace and this is a Princess Connect video. And today we're gonna to be talking about the upcoming two batches, eight and 8.5 for unique equipment. And so honestly, batch eight and 8.5 are quite easy. I don't like 100% agree with a lot of what is said here. Of course, like it's like 90% agree. It's just me being nitpicky. But all in all, I have to say that the majority of these UEs that we'll be covering today so these ones over here and then these summer units over here, they're kind of lackluster. It's kind of a little bit boring. However, nevertheless, even though they're boring, sometimes they might be like giga strong, such as like Makoto or like Kaori. And so with that said, let's jump right into the content itself. So the eighth batch has already been announced, actually. The one with Tsumugi, Suzuna, Maho, and Chika. It was announced a couple of days ago and they will be dropping on the 1st of June. So it's quite pretty exciting. And so to kick things off, we have Tsumugi over here. Tsumugi high craft priority, high level priority. And you can really see why, right? Because if we have a look at the skill one, we have 160% single target damage. And to be honest, this skill really cucked a lot of frontal meta, especially like pulling out the Makotos, pulling out the Kauris, pulling out like the tanks that don't really want to come out, pulling out the Muimis and all of those other really important units that really just want to stay where they are and then getting them killed. And so what's going to be happening to this skill, the pull, is that it is also going to stun the target for 1.5 seconds and then buff herself, Zumugi, for 1200p attack and p defense by 40 for 12 seconds. And so to be honest, like Zumugi is a top tier PvP unit. There are very few times where you will not see her, especially in the older brackets. And I say that in the context of Zumugi without UE. Now with UE, she's just even better. She's just a freaking menace, dude. And so in terms of the stun itself, hopefully it can actually stop some skills or potentially buy enough time for the rest of your team to kill somebody. And on the other hand, we've just got more offense and defense. I actually really, really like defense on Zumugi because Zumugi Zumugi, she is kind of like a bruiser, really annoying jump in there and kind of go like, like, you know what I mean? And so yeah, in terms of craft priority and level priority, I completely agree high and high, especially because like I just said, P defense, M defense, I value very, very highly on Zumugi. She can just jump in and she'll stay alive and she'll just keep messing up the enemy tank. And even when she's not messing up the enemy tanks, she is like really just being a threat to the forward position units. However, if you don't play PVP, then I would say that she is a very low priority, like probably down to red. I know that over here it says PVE can and she stuff in odd ways and it's true because I've used Tsumugi to pull out units from like Luna Tower but generally speaking there are other ways to deal with those kinds of scenarios and so next we have Suzuna who will be getting a summer ult soon so yay for her skill one which was previously throwing a crit dart and that crit dart is now turning into three attacks one, two, three, for a total damage of 270%, as opposed to previously 110. And so of these darts, the first one will always crit, and with the UE, all hits deals three times crit damage instead of two times. And so from a meta standpoint, it's actually really strong. It really does like boost her viability, especially in CB. I don't think you're gonna see much Suzuna use in the PvP. And then with the UE stats itself, you're getting attack and TP boost, going from 5 TP boost up to 15. That is honestly pretty spicy. However, the reality is, is that Susana has kind of been phased out by a lot of other higher priority physical DPSs. I'm talking the Muimis, I'm talking the Christinas, Kari UE, Jita, Shiori, etc, etc. It's not that Susana is bad, it's just that there are only so many spots for CB. And so I think Miss Nyara's assessment here is spot on. Good flex attacker, but only recommended if still missing some of those, which is kind of like the ones that I just listed off. Therefore, if you're kind of like in that position where you do have all of those units and they're all juiced up, I would say that the craft priority probably drops to low as well. All right, and so for number three, we have Maho over here, which is at a craft medium priority and a level medium slash no. Uh, very, very interesting. So let's have a look at the skill one first. Single target heals for 13,720 with the UE to the ally with the lowest HP. Also buffs its P defense by 100. And also on top of that regens, it's 2588 HP over the course of eight seconds. Like honestly, for a healer, that is pretty freaking good. And then for the stats, we have attack, P defense, M defense, and HP boost. And all of them are gonna be going up. Like you look at the HP boost and you're like, man, I really should max 
Max Maho? Why is it saying no? Why does it say do not level UE? And so the reality is, is that the Maho 6 star is used very, very heavily for loops. And if you guys have not checked out loops, like my previous loop video, I do encourage you guys to have a look at it. And so if you do want a quick sneak preview of the Maho loops, I will show you the extreme three boss auto with Nyaru. And essentially the TLDR of this is, well, the TLDR of all the other loops. Let me see if I can get this higher quality. Nope, I cannot. And so let's just run it. We are essentially just going to be getting TP again, casting UBs, TP again, casting UBs, and it's not going to stop. Look at that TP gain, go, and then we're going again. We're, we're just like, is endlessly looping this crazy, crazy damage. And the ending result is you're pretty much going to have sore fingers after maybe like 10 to 15 minutes. You might also experience extreme fatigue. And so it's for these kinds of reasons that I would say use these loops at your own risk. And so with all of that in mind, with the New Year's Kiaru, with like the Neneka, with the Summer Saren, etc, etc, that is essentially the rationale for this red no and the do not level UE. Because you see the P defense, you see the M defense over here, you see the P defense over here. You don't know if these are going to screw up your loops because you're not taking enough damage. Yes, uh, that's only in precon, guys. Only in freaking precon. And so to be honest, like there is not really a need to level up Maho or to juice her up or to give her UEs or anything because like her role, I know she does have a blind, but if you're just looking for like a PVE healer, you could definitely use like Yukari, you could use Shizuru, you could use like Misato, Yui, New Year's Yui, anybody would suffice. And then in the context of PVP, a great healer staller, I, I would say that's a little bit outdated nowadays considering like we have big bulldozer teams that just kind of like run over everything with disregard for everything. And so my personal assessment for this one would actually be drop it to red. Don't even look at her. Like don't even look at her until you actually really need her. And that is probably going to be like a year or two away, which is it's actually utterly insane that I think about it, huh? And so with that, we are going to come down to Chika, who will be giving a whole bunch of P attack as well as P crit AOE, which is like, you know, that sounds really freaking good to be honest. And then on top of the good juice, we are also going to be getting field regen at 2334 over 8 seconds. This all has a range of 200 across the first ally center. I think that's, um, I think it's okay. It's decent. And like Miss Niara says over here, a very budget Shizuru Valentine. I, I, I agree. And so to be honest, I would say that Chika is kind of going to get the Maho treatment. You don't really want to touch her simply because there are a lot of other units that you can't like really brick who probably could do her job better. From a physical buffing point of view, you're looking at other characters like Shinobu with UE or like they said, Valentine Shizuru or even Jita. And then from a healing point of view, you're looking like at your Yui, your Misato as well, the AOE heals. It's not very often that you actually want both of them in the same character like I'm <laughs> I'm not sure if I've ever seen Chika used in okay I have seen her used in very early CB but not very recently my guys and with that that is going to wrap up our eighth batch which is going to be released in like a day or two maybe when you watch this video it's already been released however with that being said let's move on to the summer units who hopefully will be getting their UEs two weeks later so let me introduce you guys to one of the most cracked out magic DPSs in the game. Uh, I mean, she's kind of held that title for a very long time. Summer Kiaru. And so as you can see, she is highlighted in yellow. She is a top priority and I completely agree. Starting off with the skill one, 190%, going up to 280% single target damage. Plus, now this is the great part, UE debuffs its M defense by 60 for 12 seconds. So if you guys forgot, her skill 2 is also a M defense debuff, another M defense down. This means that on both her skill 1 and her skill 2, she is going to be shredding M defense. And for you guys who like to look like 4 years into the future, there is indeed actually a 6 star Summer Kiaru. And what has happened here is that on her UB, she is also able to shred magic defense. I'm pretty sure she is like the only character in the game that is able to shred magic defense with all three of her skills, UB, skill one, and skill two. Honestly, it's freaking nuts. However, hopping back into our time machine, coming back to the present, we are only going to, again, 
get the skill one and skill two with the M defense down. Now for the equip itself, we've got the attack and crit going up. That is honestly fantastic. It's more DPS. She is going to have that utility in the CB, especially CB and sometimes potentially arena as well. PVE for sure. Absolutely. And so at this point, I'm pretty sure you guys already understand how incredible Summer Kiaru is. However, I'm going to come back to the four years in the future. Instead, I'm just going to look at the loop pattern because I want to show you guys how freaking frequent and how much defense down she is going to deal. So from skill two to skill one, and then she's going to attack skill two, skill one, attack, skill two, attack, skill one, attack, skill two, attack, skill one, like the uptime on the defense down, the magic defense down is just utterly insane. And so with that, I think that's enough simping for our Summer Kiaru over here. Let's move on to Summer Kokoro and uh, Summer Pekorin who have the sad red color. Summer Kokoro is not bad. Summer Pekorin is not bad. Uh, they really have the, the treatment from before, uh, the Susana treatment, right? The Susana treatment where there are unfortunately just better alternatives. In terms of Summer Kokoro, she is essentially getting a boost to her P defense down where she is going from 60 up to 100. On top of that, for raw stats, she is going from attack or defense and HP boost and that is going to be going up. Uh, the all defense should be a red flag to you guys, but you guys might be thinking the HP boost must be great because her single target heal, it's going to be better. Uh, not quite. And the reason I say not quite is because Summer Kokoro pretty much full heals anyway, so she doesn't really need that. In terms of the units that are pretty much occupying Summer Kokoro's slots, you're looking at the Yukaris, and because of the TP boost, that gives you extra damage, right? You're looking at the Vishizurus, you're looking at the Jita, who is giving party-wide TP gains. Again, for Summer Kokoro, it is literally just because there are better alternatives now. However, if you don't have all of these different characters, maybe you do need a little bit of healing, Summer Kokoro is actually still fantastic. She has like a lot of times where she overlaps with the double buff thing. And on top of that, she also goes and dunks on people for a P defense reduction of 100. Like on paper, it's actually really freaking good, okay? And so that is going to lead us to our last character that we will be valuing today, the Summer Pekrin. Ah oh man, that's, they really weren't lying when they said that she'd get power creeped in like two months. And so for Summer Pekko, let's start things off with her skill one. Buffs own attack by 4,000 going up to 9,000 plus crit by 100. That is honestly freaking fantastic. That's like, I think that's like Ericor levels. And then as for her debuff, and if you guys didn't know, Summer Pekko actually does incur a debuff, an M defense debuff when she uses her skill one. And this debuff is going to stay the same. It is reducing her own M defense by 20%. On the other hand, her stats, her raw stats, 196 attack, crit, we've got TP retain going up as well. Like again, on paper, this is a fantastic unit. However, the reality is, is that like, especially with her positioning and how she gets dumpstered by magic, where magic is like giga meta right now, you got your Ilias, you got the Misakis, you got your Kyokas, you got the Hatsune UEs, you've got the H Misakis, Pekka, Summer Pekrin is also one of the units that also gets constantly pulled by Tsumugis. It's unfortunately just not really her meta right now, and I'm not sure if she ever really comes back up until 6 star. And all of this is without even considering the AoE physical attackers. I'm talking like the Halloween Shinobu, I'm talking like the Muimi, I'm even talking Tomo, I'm talking Monica, I'm talking like potentially even Ninon. Almost all of these units are like way safer than the Summer Pekrin, and they just deal a lot more damage, and it's pretty fast. The thing with Summer Pekrin is that you really need to wait up until she gets her UB for her to dish out the big damage. For Halloween Shinobu, it's like the second skill. She does the big sweep thing and everybody dies. So yeah, unfortunately, Summer Pekko, Summer Kokoro, if you are up to date with the meta and have all the meta units, they are probably going to be sitting on the bench for a while. And so my dudes, with that, I think that is going to bring us to the end of the Unique Equipments Batch 8 and 8.5 evaluation. That was, um, yeah, essentially the TLDR is if you PvP, get your Dumugis up, and if you CB, or actually if you do anything, get your Summer Kiarus up as well. That's really the only two UEs I could recommend, and potentially Susana if you don't have some of the other core physical attackers. Everybody else, unfortunately, has to sit on the bench with the Maho, the Chika, the Summer Pekko, and the Summer Kokoro. It's not really like the uh, previous ones, like Kyoka is awesome, Mimi is awesome, Misaki is awesome, Miyako is actually really awesome as well. Ilya is quite good, especially in the context of CB. If I go back another one, Jita is awesome, Monica is awesome, Puka is also awesome, Yuki is also awesome. Awesome. Like, there are really four recommendeds for like some of these ones over here. I would say for today's batch of seven, it's really just two recommended. 
All right, and so with all that said and done, you already know what time it is. It is time for the da 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 secret question. This is going to be an interesting question because as you can see, there really is only two high priority targets for the next month. And so are you guys going to consider going backwards and potentially picking up some of the other UEs for older units such as like Aoi or Tomo or Io or even Matsuri, man? What about some of the older units like your Hatsune, potentially maybe you don't have Rin? Are you going to freaking give the Mahiru meme a shot? Let me know down in the comments below. And if you do end up leaving a comment, thank you guys so much. If you did enjoy this video or kind of found it helpful, then please consider leaving a like, subscribing to the channel, or turning on that notification bell. But otherwise, as uh, as your girl Tsumugi once said, all good things must come to an end, such as your arena streak. So thank you guys so much for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.